So I'm Laura Plummer, and I am the Technology Services Coordinator with Outreach Services for the Deaf, Hard of Hearing, and Deaf Blind. We're actually part of Department of Public Instruction, and we provide services to students, families, and um, educational teams throughout the state. So theoretically, ages 3 to 21. Um, my past experience is working kind of forever at Center for Independent Living, um, then overseeing WISTEC for a while through UW South, and now I am at where I am landed with Department of Public Instruction. So I actually have worked with all ages, and so most of what I talk, we'll talk about today really does span that whole life, lifetime. And we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of the online world. And every time I do this, I come up with more examples that I learned from you guys when we have some sharing about things that we all do online or what we don't do online. Let's see if our remote will work. There we go. Um, so really with our learning objectives today, we wanna, we're actually going to use the CRC Code of Ethics. Um, and then that's especially for anyone here that needs CRC credits. They can always submit this later for post approval. Um, but we're going to look at the pitfalls of the internet um, and then kind of compile, you'll be able to compile a list of do's and don'ts related to the online world and the work that you do. And I tend to be pretty casual when I present, so feel free to ask questions. I love it when you share examples. Um, and as our first speaker said, you know, just not the big, what did he call it, the Missouri stare? I don't want the Wisconsin stare. <laughs> All right. All right. So I always like to start with history. Um, long, long ago, we had technology to connect with others in the world. Um, there was a time when we actually would go from one person's house to another's um, and say hello and have a conversation. Um, sometimes we would do that unbidden, meaning we didn't call first or we didn't, you know, send uh, the Pony Express to say, do you mind if I come over in an hour? We just showed up. Um, we have some early computer technology shown on here as well as some early telephone equipment. So I always like to know, by a show of hands, the, the photo on the upper right is a Motorola bag phone. I'd like to see the raise of the hands. Who had a Motorola bag phone? Come on. You still have it. Are you waiting for the, the yeah, you're waiting for the trade-in, aren't you? Where they're gonna give you $25 for your old equipment. All right, so. So we have come a long way from our cell phone that was the size of a brick, or larger than a brick, um, to very, very phone call. All right. So now, what do we have? We have social interaction for this day. We have everyone looking at a device. They're standing in line, they're sitting around. And that is how mo most of the population is functioning. Now, the other day, occasionally, I will see somebody in public that is not looking at their phone or a tablet. And I just want to take a picture of them because it's just so impressive that they're able to make eye contact and walk down a hallway without looking at a device. It's, it's amazing. It's what a skill set. All right. All right. So this is our first pop quiz. We got two of them today, one in the beginning and one at the end. So we're going to do this is a read aloud activity. Um, so we have some symbols up here on the screen. And we're going to start over here on the upper left. And you're going to read aloud. So what do we have? Instagram. He thinks it's KOA. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not KOA. All right, we're going to come back to that one. Blogger, good. Who got WordPress? We got a couple WordPressers. All right. I forgot to tell you, I do give away prizes. WordPress, there we go. Ready? There are no nuts in these, these are just dark chocolate which is great for your blood pressure. It's like an antioxidant. All right, WordPress. Guys, guys. Periscope. Periscope, good one. My personal favorite. 
How about the hand? <laughs> Talk to the hand. Third eye. That's pretty close to second life. Third eye. Se yeah. Second life. And Tumblr. Tumblr. All right. What, what's Tumblr good for? Getting angry. All right. All right. What are some other uses of Tumblr? To drink on it? Okay. I thought maybe you took a drink every time, like, okay. I use it to look at really stupid things that animals do. Um, that's another good tumbler. All right. So this is our pop quiz. Most of us were able to communicate this whole language just based on what the symbols are on the screen. That's what we've become. We are now a hieroglyphic society. We're going to come back to the tent. All right. I'm waiting for someone to look it up. I can't believe nobody has so far. All right. So when we talk about the, and John's going to take care of that. Thank you, John. Well, well, I used to say that it would be rude for the, someone to be on their phone. Um, our times have changed on that as well. Um, you can pretend you're taking notes. That's all you're doing. You're not, you're not sending emails or doing anything not related to the topic. You're just taking notes. So when we talk about social media, um, there's lots of different kinds. Um, it's not just social networking. And there's reasons why we choose to use social media, both personally and professionally. And we're going to walk through that. Um, but the areas I'm going to cover, obviously, are social networking, publishing media, which would be building websites to share information, um, blogging, live streaming, um, Second Life, that's our virtual world. Um, students are now using that to attend school, um, those that aren't able to physically go to, the, to a location. Um, and then location management, which we've spent a lot of time talking about so far this morning. Um, and tied to that is the word ethics. So this whole process of using the internet, using social media, especially in our work lives, but also in our personal lives, we're also trying to figure out and navigate that, how it deals with our personal values and the ethics about the jobs that we do. Um, so ethics is really, um, it's the discipline that deals with the good and the bad and really what our morals say, what we should do, what we shouldn't do. Um, we use it as a guiding philosophy. And that's the, really the bulk of what we're going to talk about today. Not boring ethics, but how they play into the online world. So any questions so far? All right. And there is more chocolate to give away. <laughs> I have a whole bag. I won't give away the whole bag, because i got to get back to Eau Claire. <laughs> but it's kind of warm, and it melts. So not in here, no. OK. So the, for s folks that. Um, Almost all of our professions, we have a code of ethics that we need to adhere to. Your physical therapists do, your occupational therapists, your ATPs, and your rehab counselors, your teachers. So, you know, I'm a CRC, which is Certified Rehab Counselor. And that is what many of, like, our vocational rehab counselors are. And it's a very, very um, robust code of ethics. And so when you're really sleepless, you can grab a hold of that CRC code and read through it. Um, but what's been the most interesting to me with this code of ethics is, is it the evolution. Many codes will stay static, and they don't change with the times. And what CRC has really done is it's brought in the components that are impacting our jobs from an online viewpoint. Things like um, contact with clients or consumers or patients, whatever that terminology your industry is using. Things about our relationships and our boundaries. Things about, we've all seen virtual counseling now. So all of those newer ways of providing services have been incorporated into this um, ethical code. So stepping back into social media and our goals. Some of us, we all have our, and I'd like, we're going to spend a couple minutes thinking about why you use social media. 
For some folks, it's to stand out in the crowd. Maybe they're doing a blog and it's to, for self-promotion. Maybe it's for networking. It's to gain the connections you need um, or that you want. Maybe it's just literally for the social aspect. So can any, does anyone want to share why, why they may use social media? Doesn't have to be which tool, but what, what, what brings you to using social media? Oh, we need a mic, maybe. Keep up with my kids who live out of state. Keeping up with the children to li that live out of state. Good one. Nedender. High school friends. High school friends. Years ago. You really want to see those people. Where are they now? Where are they now? High school. He keeps in touch with veteran friends. She doesn't want to talk on the phone for very long. I am with you. She wants to be online and not have to actually. Does anyone else kind of dread making a phone call? No? That's totally me. All right. But professionally, I have learned the high value of using that old technology. So professionally, I will roll back and use an actual phone. Personally, I'm less likely to use that phone. Anyone more? Did you have your hand up? Uh, yeah, for a very low maintenance. For a very low maintenance. I like that's a winner right there. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Strava. Strava. Very good. She gets a prize. I really wanted to see who would get find it. So our triangles are Strava. So clearly there are no Strava heads in here right now. No? Not a single person in here is using Strava. Strava. Strava is how you track your fitness and you share it with the world. I don't. I'm an anti-Strava. So. For fitness. It's all fitness. Yeah. That was, ready? All right. Woo! All right. So this is where I'll share what my, I have personal and professional goals related to social media. Um, personally, it's to connect with friends, as many said. Um, I do share some details of my life. Um, just last week, I couldn't resist sharing the hotel envelope where I was supposed to leave a tip for the person who cleans the room, and I thought about leaving all the little hair I found in the bathroom in the envelope. Yeah, you did see that on Facebook, didn't you? Yes. I did not leave the hair, but I really wanted to. Um, it's to try new sites and apps. My job is to be on top of technology. So um, there's not enough work hours to do that. So I need to develop my skills um, off work, as well as just cat videos. Um, and this is my one of my cats up here. I just always have to throw her in there. She's the... In her, uh, that top one, she has a large mouse that she graciously caught and then brought into the house for us from outside. So she's great. She's a hunter. Yes, John. Did your cat give his, her permission to use those photos? <laughs> Is that ethically sound to share those? Smokey would really love to have her own. She has her own Instagram now, I will admit. <laughs> she does. I thought all these other people are making money off their pets. I ought to like, try to build this myself. So, I'll, You'll get all get an invite later, just trust me. So. Right. But I have professional goals as well. Um, again, networking is probably the top, top of those. It is to build those connections. Um, it's learning information and resources. And I also, I think each and every one of us would be lying to ourselves if we didn't use it for distraction at times, professionally and personally. Um, it's amazing how fast an hour can go away when I am reading um, Twitter feeds under our work Twitter feed that I manage. Like all of a sudden, wow, there went a whole hour and um, I'm reading Twitter feeds related to my job, but um, a little bit of a distraction. So as we go through this, think about both, most of what I heard from you were your, kind of your personal goals related to social media. Um, so 
kind of maybe shift that and think a little bit about your professional goals related to social media. So this is, does anyone want to share what they're using it professionally for? We need, oh, Mike. Or I can repeat it back, too. I just wanted to give you an excuse to run around. I need <laughs> it. Maybe you could Strava <laughs> the, Strava <laughs> it, you know. Um, we use social media, specifically Facebook, for um, announcing events that we might have at work. Mm -hmm. So events that our consumers might be interested in. Great. Or the public. Or the public. Or the public. Okay. And did I hear another voice? Any other, anything different someone uses it for? Um, I like a lot of pages that are relevant to work, other agencies and organizations, and I read their articles, and we share them in our department together. So you kind of use it like a reference library. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Great, great example, Pauline. You even get chocolate for that. You can you can gift it to someone. <laughs> Think about others. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, I had an example. Sure. Social media for looking out for rats. I use social media to communicate with a woman who is, did not have the ability to speak. Mm -hmm. One of my consumers. Okay. The end. Ooh, we're going to talk about boundaries later. Eee. Perfect. Um, so again, the, the questions to ask is, you know, as you look, what, um, what again, what are your goals related to it? Choosing your platforms. Um, which of all those symbols? or all of them, do you want to have accounts and get involved with? Um, how do you want your, the online you to be? Um, and giving thought to that. Raise your hand if you are really happy that social media did not exist. I know you can't do that if you're really young in here, but who's happy it didn't exist when you were in college? <laughs> Still in college, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so what's the message that you want to convey? Um, and we're going to talk about the boundaries and things like that as we move through. Um, and then another piece of that is interaction. Um, do you want your use to be interactive or do you want it to be one way? Things such as blogging. People can comment, but really the purpose of a blog is to share out, not necessarily to receive feedback in or communication in. So those are the questions that we think through as we look at our use of the internet. All right, this is a big deep question. Digital footprint. What is it? Everywhere you've been online. Look at that chocolate. That pretty much encompasses it. Anybody have any other ones they want to add? Hmm? The tracking device. <laughs> the tracking device, yes. It is everything. It is your, the pages you go to. It is your messages you send. It's your browsing history. It's your likes, your dislikes, your click-throughs, your shopping, your locations. And it's everything you do. We may use, um, you know, discrete browsers. There's a few out there like DuckDuckGo. You can do an incognito window. But believe it or not, and I have a couple stories on this that everybody knows everything you're doing. So um, really, I'm a firm believer that if you don't want to have much of a presence or not be found, you're going back to horse and buggy and actual cash days, pretty much. So, um, but it's, it's how we manage and know our risks out there that make the difference in what people will know. How long does it last? Forever. Forever. Great answer. All right. So this is just a cartoon up here, and it, it reads, uh, it's three people. They're like in a job line. Unemployable due to stupid personal stuff I put on my Facebook page. Ha, me too. 
And for me, it was an embarrassing YouTube video. So these are all individuals looking for employment. Um, you know, who knows, that video though eventually could just get that guy hired because someone thought it was funny and creative. So you just never know. All right. So, so it, the, our world is a very small world. So our vi digital footprint is everything we do. It lasts forever in a very small world. I saw you nodding over there. If you have any good evil stories you want to share about how small a world it is? <laughs> over a drink, maybe? No. All right. Don't use your real name. No. All right. So we're going to the dark side of the internet. There's cake. That's all I know. All right. Okay. So we're going to step through all the different variables we need to think about. And boundaries is our first one. So you want to think about who you make connections with. Um, and from a professional standpoint, that's pretty critical. Um, it is thinking about that. Now you just said that you are connected with a consumer via social media. Okay. Now is that your, you can just choose to answer, you can choose not to answer. Um, is this a Facebook account? Is it a LinkedIn account? No. Okay. Or is it just email? Yeah, email. Okay. Email and text. Yeah. Okay. Is, I was wondering, is that considered? And this is going to show how old I am. That's all right. No, <laughs> we're getting there. No, so it's email and media? It, kind of. My question to you then, is that a work phone or your personal phone? A personal phone. Personal phone. But it was an extenuating circumstance? No, I, we, we all get that. It's not something that we do as a general practice. Right. Yep. Yeah. So I'm just I'm not here to and I'm not here to cast judgment on everybody anybody whatsoever. I'm just sharing the little things that we think through as we do this. So Laura? Yep. Laura, circumstance because my husband is deaf, so I'm part of the deaf world. Yep. I am tracked by consumers who are are deaf or very hard of hearing. They want to talk to me on Glide. They want to talk to me on my VP through the devices. Mm -hmm. They connect with me through Facebook, through other people. And they would consider it very rude for me not to be responsive. And they have asked questions I can't answer. Mm -hmm. Why can't Henry go to camp? Why doesn't he have enough money? Well, I can't discuss that with you. Right. But it would be rude of me not to... Be, and I socialize with these people, play right. cards with them, so it's a really fine line. It is, yep. And that's a great example. Um, Linda's sharing about the deaf community. It's a very cohesive group. And so because her husband is part of that community, she, by part of that, is also involved with that community. Um, but knowing those boundaries and knowing where you're drawing the line, that's where you're bringing that, <coughs> that ethical code into your, your daily life. Um, by realizing, okay, I can't answer this, I can't share that. Um, so that's a perfect example. The same thing happens in small towns. You know, we've got a lot of rural communities. Everybody knows everybody. Or in your subsidized housing building. So you're going to visit and so-and-so knows so-and-so. So all of those, it's a very small world. Um, the other thing with our boundaries is whether we can remain objective if we learn something via social media. So in our political times, you know, you may have friends that share their political views. And then you have to think back, like, yes. does that alter your opinion of that person? I can wholeheartedly say it does. Do I want it to? Mm -mm. But it does. And so, if you are connected or see something related to a consumer, even if you're not intentionally seeking out that information, you know, friend of a friend of a friend, and is that going to alter how you address services with that person? Is that going to skew your thoughts? Um, you know, and also the connections with your colleagues. Where do you draw the line? Do you say, no, I'm not going to friend anyone on social media that I work with? Or I'll pick and choose who I'm friends with. I'm friends with several of you in this room. 
but and how do I originally know you? Professional. But we chose to connect. So oops, these are all these are all just things of thoughts to think about. There is no right or wrong. Well, a few ones there are. <laughs> Um, we have to think about the technology skills related to this, um, both for yourselves and the consumers when you're setting up technology for people. Um, you have to think about their digital literacy, their skill set. Things like privacy settings, location management. We're going to talk about that a lot. We already did this morning. Um, our cached web information. Um, really, in order to protect your privacy, you have to have a pretty high skill set these days to navigate all of the layers within Facebook privacy settings, for example. Um, I found a few a couple months ago that I didn't even know were there. And I consider myself pretty well versed in going as far down into those settings as I need to. Um, so we need to make sure that if we're setting up technology, we're also imparting that knowledge for maintenance of those privacy settings to our consumers that we're working with, or giving them the tools and resources, or connecting them to somebody that can help them if they need down the line. Because that stuff gets updated outside of our control. 